whilst uh, the guys go fishing. But hey, some of the women decide to fish as well, you know. And they catch more fish than we do. Really? Is that? Yeah. Are you joking? No, I'm not joking. No, I mean they hold all the all the world records, or the not the world records, but all the national records. The lady has the heaviest fish ever caught, which is 64 and three quarter pounds, which is by Miss Ballantyne, which was taken in the uh, early 1900s. It took her so long to land it, they had to light bonfires beside the Tay so that they they could see to get it in. All right. But she landed it, and uh, then we have uh, the best one, heaviest one caught on a fly, again a lady. Really? And the same in England and the same in Wales. So those fellas aren't doing too so well. So is this something that you're saying as a professional fly fishing instructor, or is this kind of generally known in the oh, fishing world it, that women it, are better than men? I think they didn't generally know as fishing women are better than men, and men would never admit that anyway. But mm. uh, uh, I think that men are always very competitive. And what generally happens is, is the ghillie will tell them to cast to the middle of the river, sir, and follow that uh, the line of bubbles right down the pool, sir, and don't cast any further than that. You'll mm. catch a fish. Mm. That's fine. That's what we do. Then somebody comes along the bank and he starts casting twice as far as you're casting, so you want to show him that you can cast just as far as he can, and so it goes on. Mm. Now, the lady's been told exactly the same thing, but she doesn't bother about that because she knows she can't compete with the distance cast, so mm. she's staying where she's going. Mm -hmm. She generally picks the fish up. It's nothing to do with femorones, which right. is what, what a lot of people always claim. <laughs> what, what about the other thing I asked you about was the, um, the saltwater fly fishing, because I saw that on your website. What's that all about? If well, the saltwater salt fly fishing, we, it's, it's, everything, it's a big craze. Everybody suddenly got into saltwater fly fishing. Actually, I can go back to when I was 11 years old catching uh, mackerel on bits of feathers in Clarton Wyke, um, which is in Yorkshire. Um, so there's nothing particularly new about it, but uh, it's now become quite a, a, a fad. A lot of people now that around the south coast started, started on the south coast, where you've got sea bass coming in uh, on, the, on the tides, and uh, people found they could catch them on the fly. Now, sea bass are now coming right round the coast of Scotland, right away the way to northern England, and uh, obviously up the Norfolk coast here, and a lot of people would like to know how to do it, where to go and the safe way to catch fish. So that's what we run the course. It's basically it's a course to show you the type of places you go, the type of flies that you need to use, the equipment you need to use and the sort of places you need to look for and the signs that show that the fish are there. Because obviously you can't see them in the water. They're not like trout that you can actually see in a clear water sitting there. Mm. You've got to look for other features mm. and that's what we do on the saltwater course. You said that we're going to go to a lake today here in Norfolk. Where are we going? Well, we're going to, we're going to Narborough Trout Lakes, which is uh, based just outside Kings Lynn. And uh, it's uh, got three lakes that you can fish on. Um, these are stocked lakes with rainbow trout. Now, the difference between rainbow trout and uh, wild brown trout mm. is that rainbow trout are, are not an indigenous to Great Britain. Mm -hmm. uh, they came originally from Canada, uh, the USA and were brought over here because they, their growth rate is very quick and they, they produce meat quickly and they're ideal for fish farmers to grow uh, trout for the mm. table. Mm. However, they also make quite aggressive uh, fish to catch so we, we've, we take people there because it's quite a good place to start fishing. Mm. Now rainbows, uh, by and large, unlike brown trout, they tend to go around the, the, the pond or the lake that they're in swimming around looking for food. Now brown trout are territorial so a brown trout will lay underneath a, uh, a fallen log or along the edge of the uh, uh, lake somewhere where um, rainbow trout will swim around looking for food so every so often they'll come past you mm. and make sure you've got the right fly in the water at the right time and you'll catch one. Mm -hmm. So am I going to catch a fish today then? Well I can't say you can genuinely catch a fish today but I'm sure you have every chance of catching one there yeah. far more than a lot of the other places you might go. Yeah. Well, should we make a move and go and do some fishing? I think we should. I think yeah? we'll get the rods together and we'll go and uh, see if we can catch. All right then. Okay. All Cheers. Right then. Cheers.